Family of a young woman seriously hurt in a shooting on South Union Avenue wants justice and is begging for anyone with information to come forward. Eyewitness News reporter Raina Harvey spoke with Alizé Weber's family and tells us they are devastated but not giving up hope. Hey guys, I'm back and I am here today to tell you guys my story. I do have a lot of details, of course, between A to Z, beginning from end. But what I'm going to do is just give you the gist of what happened. And the details will come later. I will be making other videos going into detail on my injuries and my pains that I will have forever, things that I have to live with as well. Uh, that will be in another video as well as um, I'll be bringing, I'll be making a video with my sister. She was the person who got the call, the first one. And uh, mom and dad, of course, they're my parents. So you guys could see and hear their point of view and how they felt. Anyways, I'm going to begin with and just bear with me because I'm a little emotional. I've been thinking since last night how I'm going to put things together and try not to, you know, cry or be sad. But it's natural for me to be sad, you know. And I've been, it's really hard to be strong. Really, really hard to be strong. I have my days, of course. But I hold so much back. Anyways, I'm going to start July 4th. 2017 my 21st birthday my boyfriend Mikey insisted to take me to dinner so when my birthday hit at 12 we went out to firehouse we had um, some wings we just ate there and he bought me my first drink which was an audios it was my favorite color turquoise so I thought it was I thought it was gonna be so good because it was so pretty but I'm really not a drinker but I still you know had it a little because he bought it for me and I'm 21, so why not try what everyone else is doing, right? So we went there to Firehouse. We chilled for a little bit and they closed at 2 a.m. So we left right before they were closing. As we leave, we walk outside of the restaurant about maybe 1.30 a.m. Um, and, you know, there's a group of guys out there and there's a guy that's trying to talk to me and get at me and of course I'm not responding to him because I'm with my boyfriend so of course like I walk away and I'm not responsive and like no I'm good like like I'm with my boyfriend no I'm good and so we get in the car and we leave so we leave thinking everything's good everything's cool and if something if we if either of us felt wrong about anything you know we would have said so but we felt like everything was good, everything was smooth, and we had to get up early the next morning anyways because my family was giving a brunch for me. We were going to brunch, doing the whole nine for my 21st. And so I, we left, they followed us. So they followed us to our destination. We went to a store and they followed us. Mikey gets out the car, maybe about a couple of minutes. He was gone out the car. He gets back in the car. He starts to reverse. He puts the car in reverse to get out of the parking lot. And this guy comes to the side of the car, the passenger. I'm a passenger. Mikey's driving. I'm in the passenger. He comes on my side and he just lets fire. And me, I'm thinking I'm having a dream because why are we getting shot at is my question. Even in my dream, why am I getting shot at? So I'm thinking this is a dream. First thing that I do that was just quick that I thought of, all I see is all this gunfire just constantly just going. And so I drop down and I just like take cover. Like I put up my hands and my arms, which is why my hands and my arms got shot all the way up. So this finger stuck like this. I, ha I can't bend it. Um, that stuck like that and then my index finger on my right hand I don't have um, a big knuckle I can't so typing and writing you know it hurts things like that um, so yeah my hands got shot up and my arm and then I got grazed a few times as well but the actual shots and injuries 
um, because when I seen it happening, I'm like, why is he still shooting? But I'm thinking this is a dream. So I'm like, uh, I just put my hands up with my arms, duck down, and it's just still going. And in my mind, I'm like, I turn to the door to try to get out, but then I'm like, no, if I get out and try to run, he's going to shoot me in my back. I'm going to die. That's what I'm thinking. Not thinking this is real life, but this is what I'm thinking because things happen so fast. This all happened within a couple of minutes. And he emptied out his clip in my car. So 30 shots into my car. Mikey dies getting shot with majority of the shots. I get shot eight times. And you're just the whole time you're just emptying the clip why i'm confused but we so after that i do not the first responders came 11 minutes after what happened there was a couple of witnesses eyewitnesses they seen what happened they were devastated called and just was in shock and awe basically like what the heck did i just see and so I feel like I'm going to stand again. Like I got to testify. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah. And I don't remember getting into the ambulance. I don't, I just remember them saying there was so much blood everywhere. So they had to, um, they had to shave off my hair because there was blood everywhere. And so they didn't know where it was coming from. I have, you know, this is my right side right here. And so they shaved off all my hair and my hair was all the way down to my back. But when I woke up in the hospital the following morning, the first two people I seen were my two brothers, um, my brother Fats and my brother Isaac. And of course I felt the way that I felt I would never wish on my worst enemy I was just I was stuck in bed and I was stuck in bed and I looked at them and I was in like oh my god like you're here to save me type of thing but I'm not thinking I'm in the hospital I'm thinking I'm in my bed why is all my family in my room in my house why are you guys here yeah it's my birthday but like why how'd you guys get in was my question to myself because i'm thinking it's a dream so but i'm in and out because i'm highly sedated so they have me on meds like every four hours every five hours they have me on all types of meds just all these pain meds and so i'm just out of it so when i am awake i see people and i'm just like um okay and people wouldn't you know tell me um certain things I couldn't talk I couldn't move I couldn't breathe I couldn't do anything so I'm trying to think back the whole time why am I in here is this a hospital because I'm hearing all these machines I'm confused myself because I thought this was a dream and then I'm not sure on how many days later my dad was next to my bed and he said mama you don't remember what happened and I looked at him and I dropped back and closed my eyes and I just seen everything happen again. And to myself, I'm like, oh my God, I got shot. And I'm thinking if I'm in the hospital, if I'm okay, Mikey has to be okay as well. He's in another room in the hospital. So I'm just, so my mind's just going everywhere. I'm, I'm just confused as ever. I don't know nothing about nothing. Didn't know my hair was gone. Didn't know anything. But basically, what I'm what I'm saying is there was there's no way there's no way that I am here today. There's no way that I am here today with somebody shooting at my car 30 times and he's on my side emptying the clip in my window. And I only get hit eight times and I'm still breathing and doing everything that I did before my accident two years ago. That was only God. There's no way that I get shot in my head and I'm here today doing anything and everything everybody else can do. 
Yes, I have injuries. I have stuff that I have to live with for the rest of my life, of course. But that is my story. That's how things went down. Um, we were unaware of being followed, but they followed us from the restaurant to the store. There was a driver. There was one shooter. He shot us with a Tech 9. Had an extended clip, of course. Um, and if it wasn't us, it was probably going to be somebody else. So, um, we were unaware that we were being followed and we were unaware that there was an issue with people that we seen at the restaurant because we didn't know these guys. It was just, it was, it was so confusing. Things were backwards. I will uh, be making another video, uh, later to go into detail about um, my rehabilitation and how long it take it took me to get to where I am right now and I'm still healing of course I don't think I'm gonna stop but uh, there's so many details in between and I'm just gonna give it to you guys broken up um, I don't want to smash everything all in one video because there's so many details. There's so many things that I felt and there's so many things that happened and that's still going on with me personally. But what I'm doing, oh, I still have my days my anxieties, my triggers are really, really sensitive. Um, but that was a, that was a crazy night. I will, crazy because everything was smooth, everything was going good. And all of a sudden, we're attacked, we're being attacked from the unknown and confused why. Yeah, it, it was... It was so much, it was confusing and and I'm thinking this is a dream. So as he's shooting, I'm looking and I'm just yelling and I'm like, go, cause I know I'm not driving. So I'm like, go, like press the gas, like go, like run them over type of thing. Cause he's right there. And I'm just like, go, go. And I'm yelling and I'm yelling. And I'm like, why isn't he responding? So I look to my left. And unresponsive. And I'm just like, what? And I'm, and I know after a couple of my shots, my body was so numb to the pain that my body just took everything. So I'm not sure on which shot was second, third, fourth. But I know my body, I was just like, just taking them, just like, okay like are you still going it was oh my god it was like a movie it was like a movie so that's why i'm still confused to this to this day and i and i have right now i'm having flashbacks i'm having all these details and just it's just it's just so much and i have flashbacks constantly that night goes through my mind constantly I'm in that passenger seat watching everything happen and can't do anything because I'm getting shot as well and I pass out, get knocked out and I'm unresponsive and so <sighs> I know I'm missing a lot and I can't give you everything right now. Um, my mind is everywhere right now i'm thinking about that night i'm thinking about how it started how it ended um there's there's so there might be some stuff that i'm missing but that's how that night happened but everything after the fact i will give to you guys later um but he just insisted on taking me out to dinner it was, and so he wanted to make a special, and so we went. 
and we thought everything was fine and I guess things weren't with other people for whatever reason and so yeah it's tough to sit here and think about it in detail even when I do have flashbacks constantly um I just know that my story in the way that I have been, the way that I was before my accident and how I am now that I can help people and prevent certain situations. So that's why I'm being open and bold enough to let you guys know what happened and how I feel and what I seen happen in front of my eyes. What the news told people, what everyone else heard is a different story, but there was only two people in the car. There's only two people in the car. There's only two people that know everything that went down and that happened. So, there's so much more to tell. There's so much more to tell. Um, that's, that's what happened that night. And I feel like there was just a shield over me that night because there's no way there's no way in me protecting myself with my hands and my arm, which also got, and I feel like if I didn't duck down and cover myself, I probably, you know, would have gotten a lot in this area, but that's why my hands, so my fingers are ruined and my arm is ruined. I mean, I'm still mobile and everything, but that's why I have metal plate and screws and just a whole bunch of going on forever. So I have things that I have to live with. It's not easy being a survivor. It's not easy at all. I am I am happy to be here. I'm happy that I'm survived. I'm still trying to find my reason and my purpose because there's no way, there's no way that you're at my window and you're emptying out the clip and I'm still here. There's There's no way. So I'm still trying to find my purpose. I'm still trying to figure out why am I still here? There's a reason behind everything. I'm still trying to figure that out. And there's just so much more to tell, guys. And I'll be making another video later uh, with my little sister, Amori. She was um, the first person who got the call. And at the time, she was 15, I want to say. So, um, I will see you guys later and I couldn't hold back these emotions. It's natural. It happens. And I feel like I've been through enough, still going through a lot. And it's, it's so hard to be strong. It's so hard to be strong. It really is. But... I'm happy to be here and it's not it's not easy being a survivor it's not you got to deal with all the backlash you have to deal with everything from everyone everything there's so much and if you guys have questions or concerns any questions I'll I'll try to answer them the best that I can the best way that I can but I don't mind the questions be bold and ask your questions because I would rather people ask questions so that I can give you the real answer rather than asking people that think they know the answers and don't know. But thank you guys for watching and share my video. Um, be bold enough to ask questions, comment, share. Thank you.